Hello, my name is Brooke Ward. I'm the President and CEO of the Washington Health System. It's my honor to be back with you again today for our Friday video series where we attempt to give you updates about what's going on in the environment around us and within our health system. And I have a number of updates for you today. First, starting with the flu vaccine. The annual flu program across the U.S. is an important part of our health care system to keep you and your loved ones safe. And this year, it's more important than ever. The CDC recommends everyone six months and older get the annual flu vaccine every year by the end of October at the latest. This helps prevent the, the spread of flu, keeping you safe and your family safe. And we want to stress this this year. It's extremely important. And here's why. Not only will it do what it does every year, which to help prevent us all from getting sick, but it'll help prevent the use of valuable resources during this time period where we're also fighting the coronavirus. So please get your flu vaccine. That'll help diminish the need for people who need to be hospitalized and get ill and save those resources for COVID patients if necessary. You can get the flu vaccine in a number of locations, your physician office, pharmacies, health departments, and a number of others. So please do that. Um, it's a proactive and great thing to do to help keep you and your family safe and again, help protect those valuable resources. Now, moving on to the coronavirus. As you know, we have two testing sites now where you can drive up and get uh, walk up sort of drive up service. One is at our Wellness Way here in Washington. The other one is at the Washington Health System Green down in Green County. We're going to make two changes here coming up soon. The first one is starting October 5th. We're going to change those sites from a drive up walk up service to a scheduled service. So you need to schedule that appointment starting um, after October 5th. The number to schedule that is 724-579-1683. Please schedule. That'll help us time the staff and the demand. That'll also help prevent having a number of cars backed up waiting for a turn because we'll have scheduled slots when you can show up. We hope that'll make it better. The second change we're getting ready to make is we're going to move those ser services indoors. We know the winter weather is coming and it's not going to be great for people to be sort of leaning out the window of their car or for our staff to be outside all winter long. So at the Wellness Way, we have purchased a, a trailer we're going to install around the side of the Wilf and R. Cameron Wellness Center where people, once it's installed about a month from now, can come into the building into a dedicated, isolated space for COVID patients where they can get that COVID test. Down in Waynesburg in Greene County, we're renovating a space on the lower level of the Washington Health System Green where the old Wellness Center used to be. So it'll have an exterior door. Patients can walk right into that dedicated confidential, secure space, get their COVID test and leave, and then we can get this inside and out of the weather. Those are both expected to be up and running in approximately a month. Now, we've also been doing since the very beginning mandatory pre-surgical and pre-procedure COVID testing on everybody who comes in. We started that months and months ago to make sure that we weren't bringing someone into one of our facilities who was asymptomatic and positive COVID and potentially contaminating others. At this point, we have tested literally hundreds and hundreds of people, and we've had two people who've tested positive in that case. On top of that, every time you come in for surgery or procedure, all of our people are wearing universal precautions in the appropriate PPE to protect them and you, whether they have COVID or not. So starting at the end of day Friday, we're going to stop doing mandatory COVID testing. We want to save those resources for where we really need it. Now, we're going to leave it up to your surgeon and your physician to make a clinical judgment. If they feel prior to your surgery or procedure you need a COVID test, they can order that just like they would a chest x-ray, lab work, and other things. But if you're asymptomatic and the physician doesn't feel like it's needed, we're not going to require it. And if you are symptomatic, of course, we would like you to have the test done just to make sure you do or don't have COVID um, positive signs and symptoms. We've also made one little tweak to our visitor policy, otherwise it's the same. When you come into our hospitals, you're allowed to have one visitor to come in, stay with you basically through the day, but one visitor at a time, and they're required to wear a mask at all times while they're in our building, and that's still true. The one change we're going to make is in our physician offices, we're now going to allow one visitor or support person to come in with the patient for their visit. Up until now, we have not allowed anybody to come in with the patient. That change is being implemented as we speak. In addition to all of that, we're also worried about the fall weather when it comes normally flu, strep, and common colds. And oftentimes the sign and symptoms for those is the same for COVID. And in the past, when you got strep, the flu, a common cold, you'd call your primary care office, they'd schedule you to come in and they'd see you. But in today's environment, we're not sure if that's what you're coming in for or if you actually have COVID. And we wanna make sure that you potentially don't spread that to others inadvertently. So we're going to set up two dedicated respiratory clinics, one in Washington, one in Green. The one in Washington is going to be at the Neighbor Health Center in Building 2. 
The one in green is going to be down at the Family Medicine Center out by the airport around the back. These are going to be dedicated clinics that have um, appropriate HVAC set up, so air handling to make sure we circulate and get the air out. Anytime you call to schedule an appointment with one of our physician offices, and these are our employed offices in the WPG or in our residency program, and if you have a common cough, flu, strep, or maybe COVID, instead of coming in and see your normal primary care doc, we're going to send you to that clinic where they can do rapid strep, rapid flu, and a rapid COVID test. And of course, if you test positive for any of that, our physicians who are going to be rotating through those clinics can take care of you without going to your normal primary care clinic. Now, if you test negative, then we can send you safely back to your normal primary care doc and they can handle whatever you need. This will help protect our staff and our physicians and help protect you as well. We're expecting all of these to be up and running shortly. The site at Neighbor Health Center will be up and running either November or early December, and we plan to operate that through April of 2021. And down at Greene County, it'll start at the end of October or early November, and that'll operate through April of next year as well. Now, changing gears away from COVID, I want to talk about our visitor parking. I think I mentioned in the past we're going to be changing our visitor parking um, and gate system here soon, and we did, in fact, change that Tuesday, September 29th this week. We now have our new visitor gates in place, and we'll have a new system that requires a ticket instead of the old token system we had in the past. As a reminder, we've set it up now so that instead of a, an automatic 3 or $4 per time, it's set up based on time. So the first 70 minutes that you come in, the parking is free. So if you want to come in for a quick, quick chest x-ray, lab draw, pick up medical records, eat in our cafeteria, whatever it is in the future, those first 70 minutes will be free. And this is, again, at the Washington Hospital. After that, the next, hour would, the next hour would be a dollar. The second to third hour would be uh, $2. From the third hour to the fourth hour would be $3. And then any time after four hours or more, it would be $4 for the whole day. And if you lost your ticket, it would be $4. And so for most of you, this would be a better setup than we had in the past because you could come in and come out and not have to pay anything. You only have to pay incrementally based on the time after that. So we think it's a good system. Keep in mind, if you're paying with cash, take the ticket when you pull into the lot, bring it into the building, and there'll be pay stations in the building where you can pay for cash. If you're using a credit card, you can use the pay stations in the building as well, or you can pay with a credit card right at the gate as you drive away. Now, I've had a few people ask me, why do we even charge for parking? And the main reason is we're a nonprofit community organization. So all of our dollars go into taking care of you, your you know, the facility, healthcare technology, these kind of things. When you pay to park, it helps pay for the facilities, the parking garages, those kind of things to help support those other more critical needs. So this system went into place this week. I know it's a change and we're all going to have to get used to it, but we'll rip off the Band-Aid. I think it's going to be a great thing. We'll all get used to it very quickly. Now, we have a number of things to sort of recognize this week, and I want to start with uh, Septus Awareness Month. That's the month of September, and I want to first start by recognizing and thanking Dr. Sperry. He went out of his way to raise awareness around our organization about the dangers of sepsis and making sure our staff and our employees were aware of it. So I want to thank Dr. Sperry. Sepsis is a life-threatening condition that kills over 270,000 Americans every single year. So it's important to recognize the signs and symptoms of sepsis, and they are confusion, shortness of breath, high heart rate, fever, discomfort, clamminess, or uh, sweaty skin. So if you or a loved one have those symptoms, please be aware that could be sepsis and it is important. And again, I want to thank Dr. Sperry. Now in October, there are two areas we want to recognize. One is the Breast Cancer Awareness Month that happens every October. So this is an annual campaign to raise awareness around the disease and raise money for research, the cure, um, and all those kind of things to eradicate that disease, which is terrible for our society. Now, our Vice President of Operations for the Washington Health System, who also happens to be the President of the Washington Health System Green, Mr. Terry Wiltrout, has volunteered to participate in a program called Real Men Wear Pink, where he's going to be wearing pink outfits, if not every day, many days in the month of October, to raise awareness around this issue and help raise money as well. So this money will go to the American Cancer Society's breast cancer initiatives around research, education, and patient services for breast cancer. And so you can follow us on Facebook to watch Terry's outfits change. You can follow us to get information. And if you want to help Terry raise money, his goal is to raise at least $2,500 this month. You can click the link below and help donate money to help Terry and his cause. The other monthly awareness we wanted to talk about today was Patient-Centered Care Awareness Month. This happens every October as well. 
This is an initiative to help raise awareness around patient-centered uh, care awareness across the country. The Washington Health System has been involved with the Patient Family Center Care Initiative for over eight years, and we implemented that philosophy here. And the difference really is, instead of us doing two things to and for you, where the physician, the nurse, or the provider is the most important person in the room, we're doing stuff with you where you and your family are the most important members of our team. That's a philosophy we implemented about eight years ago. It's core to the Patient Family Center Care Initiative, and we wanted to acknowledge that this month is Patient Family Center Care Initiative Month. It's a continuous improvement towards making sure that we do everything we can to meet our mission to provide great patient care for you while we're doing it with you because we put you and your loved ones first. Now you can help us with this as well. After you come in for a visit, either inpatient services or outpatient services, we often send you a Prescani service survey. Your feedback on that is tremendous. That will help us figure out what we can do better and recognize team members when they do something great. So if you get one of those surveys, we really appreciate the feedback. It helps us get better every day. And that's all part of the Patient Family Center Care Initiative. Then moving on to the foundation. I wanted to just thank many, many people who put time and effort into our annual clay shoot. This is an annual fundraiser that goes to the Washington Health System Foundation to help support the services at the Washington Health System. In spite of everything going on this year, we recently had our clay shoot. We put in enhanced safety protocols for COVID and we had a great event. And I wanted to thank the dozens of corporate sponsors who helped uh, fund the event and all the shooters who came out and bought tickets and had a great time. We had a wonderful event. It raised a lot of money for the health system. I appreciate everybody who participated. And I also wanted to thank the foundation staff for organizing it, coordinating it, along with the clay shoot steering committee. All those individuals volunteered their time and effort to get that done. It was amazing. Thank you for that. That's my updates for this video. I hope you found it useful. I appreciate you taking some time to watch it. Um, until our next video on October 16th, stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you then.